You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to Dare to Soar with your host, Dr. R.C. Dr. R.C. will empower, encourage, and strengthen you. She will help you to soar to your highest potential while instilling hope. Please welcome the host of Dare to Soar, Dr. R.C. Good morning. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I am Dr. R.C., your host, and you are listening to Dare to Soar. This morning, listeners, I have with me Miss Shalika Tenzinger. She is a woman with a big heart. She was born in Atlanta, Georgia, and raised in City of Decatur. Miss Tenzinger Tinsinger obtained a bachelor's degree in public health and is currently working on a master's in public health with a concentration in epidemiology. She is the owner and founder of the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen, which is a 501 nonprofit organization that fights to end hunger and rebuild the community by providing food, clothing, and jobs to those in need. Ms. Tenzinger shares that she was motivated to start this organization while growing up and seeing the various needs throughout Metro Atlanta. She goes on further to state that she always felt compelled to do something about this with what had been happening or what she had been witnessing. It also felt compelling to do something about this. As she felt compelled to do something about this, she began to witness things that were occurring around her. By seeing the matriarch of her family, her great-grandmother, Miss Eunice Hart, better known as Big Mama, she saw Big Mama feed the community, and doing that, she felt that she had to do something about this. And Big Mama said to her, I never met a stranger. No matter who you were or what your background was, Big Mama always invited you in for you to be able to eat. She fed the kids in the community whose parents worked late or who didn't have money to be fed. And she even fed the grown-ups as well that made mistakes in life or they didn't have money to eat. Thus, as she continued to witness this, on into adulthood, her concept was and still is to always accept everyone with love, with no questions being asked, and helping has continued to be the best way to pass on the inspiration just as it was given to her as a young child. Ms. Tinsinger is determined to carry on Big Mama's legacy through the most important title that she holds very near and dear to her heart of being a mother of two beautiful children, ages 17 and 7, who she quotes as being her world, but also to the best of her ability through the work that she is doing right now through the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen by never complaining or turning anyone away. Listeners, this morning I have with me, as I stated earlier, owner and founder, Ms. Shalika Tenzinger, who will share with us how she became empowered to start the Prodigal Soup Kitchen that fights to end hunger and rebuild the community by providing food, clothing, and jobs to those in need. Good morning, Ms. Tenzinger. Welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm so blessed to be here. 
And we are excited and happy to have you. Um, And I just want to say, as being a school social worker, resources are vitally important to the work that we do. Because when we address the needs of our families and communities, especially when we're looking at our children, this is a great resource. So I am excited to share information that you're going to be uh, expounding on as we go on this morning. And right before we jump into our questioning, I want to give our listeners this call-in number. So when we begin to get into the thrust of our questioning, they feel free to call in. And that number is 1-866-451-1451. So as we get started, what is the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen and what is its purpose? Yes, so the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen is a 501c3 nonprofit organization We serve the community by providing food, clothing, and resources to anyone in need. Our purpose and mission is to spread the love of Jesus by not judging anyone because of their circumstances. We have a no-question-asked policy, meaning we help anyone in need regardless of your circumstances, your belief, nationality, or sexual preference. And I'm so glad that you share that, that you help anyone, because oftentimes, When families feel as though they need assistance, they begin to shy away from that purpose. Um, When Mm -hmm. sometimes when we're going through an issue or a situation, it's about uh, you you feel it's pridefulness um, and that's what it breaks down to. And there's no shame in needing assistance. And we want everyone to understand that. So it's very important to relay that message that everyone needs help at some point in time in life. So if we're able to share a resource where this can be availed to them, certainly we want to put this information out here and let them know that it is available to them. So that point is certainly, certainly important. So share with us also, with our listeners, how did you come up with the name of the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen? That is such a unique name. <laughs> yes. Yes. So the name Prodigal Son comes from the story in the Bible, um, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. It's a story about a young man becoming of age and still he felt like he was grown and ready to move out. So he went to his dad. He asked for his inheritance. It broke his dad's heart, but he gave the money to him. He gave it to him. The son left. He parted, blew through all the money. But he was broke, but determined not to go back home. And so he got a job feeding pigs. When that ended, reality hit him. He didn't have anything left. He was broken. Now broke and broken, (laughs) he was ready to go back home. But little did he know his dad would look over the hills every day waiting for him to come back. And one day he did. He saw his son walking over the hills. He ran to him, hugged him. He was so happy he was back home. He didn't ask any questions. Where the money? Where you been? Why did you leave? He just accepted him, celebrated him being back. And I can relate to that story because I have made a lot of bad choices of my own and lost it all. But God, thank God he accepted me back broken, broken, with no questions asked. And by his grace, I'm still here. And such are stages in life. We have high roles, we have low roles. Stages in life can take you through so many different changes or obstacles. And I like to call them Mm -hmm. pebbles in the road because no one Mm -hmm. has a crystal ball to say what's going to happen when you turn a corner. So it's so vitally important to know that, hey, here is an opportunity that we're discussing right here and right now, that when you hit that small pebble in the road, Here's an option for you. Here's a hand that's reaching out to you to say, we are here. We are available. This is an option. And we are here to open our arms and say here right now, if you need some assistance, we are right here as an opportunity for you. So we certainly appreciate that. And we thank you for it. I'm thanking you on the behalf of those individuals that you're going to help. And I know that it is going to flourish so, so much more by simply being here right here this morning and individuals listening and tuning into us. 
and knowing that this is certainly going to be a, a resource. We're going to hold listeners right here. Don't go away. We have much more to share with you. We will be right back. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back once again. We're here on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is Dare to Soar, and I am Dr. R.C., your host. Listeners, we have returned once again. I have my guest here with me, Shalika Tenzinger, and we want to continue on with our conversation. This is a wonderful resource, the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen, and she is sharing. She is the owner and founder of the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen. And what she is sharing with us this morning is how they fight to end hunger and rebuild the community by providing food, clothing, and jobs for those in need. Now, I want to continue on with our questioning. So, Ms. Tenziger, share with our listeners what inspired you to start up the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen. Thank you. Um, again, as you mentioned before, what inspired me to start the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen was seeing the need and also seeing my great-grandmother, my best friend, Eunice Hart. Growing up, I would see her cook for different people in the community, she would give her last dollar or whatever she had to anyone in need. She taught me the true meaning of love. When I was 10 years old, I told her I was going to make her proud of me and I was going to do exactly what she did, help people. And so I hope right now she's looking down and she's proud of me. And I'm sure that she is. I'm very sure because anytime you are able to lend a hand to assist someone, that is making her proud. I've never met her, of course, but... When you extend, and it's all about paying it forward. When you're able to do that in a humble way, then it brings a smile to so many individual faces. So, like I said, I've never met her, but I'm sure, I'm sure that she's very happy about that. Thank you so much. So do you feel as though there is a, a high need for the services that you provide in this field? And if so, please share why. Yes, there is definitely a great need um, within the community because there are still kids that that goes without coats and shoes to school in the wintertime. Even this summer break coming up, there are some kids that are going to go without eating for the summer break, um, through the summer break. And so our organization is aimed to build the bridge, the gap between poverty and stability because something has to be done. Definitely, definitely. 
And I and I would certainly agree with that. Um, we see so much of that uh, ourselves in the school systems across the board. And then so oftentimes with that being said, there are uh, numerous times when families will not say what the need is. And then they have confidants mm-hmm. as far as their close yeah. friends that share information. And then before you know it, our time has gone by so quickly. And then yeah. you're looking for resources such as yourself to identify how can we put something together, package something together. So this is a child that's not going without. And then to to fold that, especially during the holiday season, this becomes Mm -hmm. even more of of such uh, an urgency, if you will, because those times are so critical, especially when you're talking about packaging the food items, especially Mm -hmm. that. So once again, Definitely getting the word out for a resource such as this. Uh, And let me take this a a step further. Now, we're talking about um, the summer and coming up, but let's go back just a tad bit on that. And -hmm. I know we're going to go into this, but the holiday season, is there Mm -hmm. something in particular that you all build around that time of the year? Yes, ma'am. Actually, around the holidays, we have worked with um, Seven Bridges to Recovery. That started back in August. That was right around school. Um, Seven Bridges, when school started, um, that was Seven Bridges to Recovery. We went out, and what we do is, what we did was we fed the people under the bridges, the homeless community. We went around to um, the Seven Bridges within Atlanta and prayed for them. Um, We also teamed with the Tabernacle Praise. We did a turkey drive church um, in McDonough, Georgia. We did a turkey drive with them. It was a turkey giveaway. And um, recently, our most recent um, success story was with some apartments in Decatur on Glenwood, Austin Oaks. We did a shoe. Um, It started off as just a clothing drive donation just to give. But once we got there, um, there was a little boy and more kids crying because we didn't have shoes. So our motive and alternative was just, just to go and provide what we had but when we got there it broke our hearts because the babies were crying because we didn't have any shoes so I promised them that I will be back with shoes new shoes for everyone and I felt this was so much bigger than me honestly I did feel like I had jumped ahead of myself and also the staff of my organization we were scrambling like it's a lot of kids but God came through we stepped out on faith and we we put it out there that we wanted sponsors and donors because I didn't want to um, give some kids used shoes, some shoes that was used, or some kids shoes that was new. So we we pushed the envelope. We all asked for new shoes or donations to purchase new shoes. The goal was sixty. We ended up with a hundred and eight pair of new shoes. Not just for them, but for their families. We were able to shoe provide shoes for everyone um, in the family. Also, the um, Atlanta Police Department and the Fire Department partnered with us and provided food. So we had cases, over 100 cases of canned goods that we also provided for them for food. So it went over and beyond. It exceeded our expectations. And we had more than enough left over. We had shoes left over. So that was our greatest success. That was the most successful um, thing that we was involved with as an organization. I also teamed with a um, a friend growing up, her name is Cece, um, she had an event where she honored her boyfriend, her late boyfriend that was killed on Glenwood. And we also went to a community in um, Stone Mountain and she provided food and she did a big thing for them as well. That was successful. So we stepped out, we moved. It's a lot of things that's coming up. We're still putting together more things and we're excited on what's ahead. But as you stated there, there's always a need, more importantly, around the holidays. Um, where it's, it's a time where most people celebrate, but it's also a time where people, you know, it's sad because they don't have um, things, the resources to give to their kids, and they some people can't face them. So that's what we like to do. We like to step in and get ahead of whatever the issue is, even if it's a, even if it's the holidays or um, just in everyday life to try to help. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I just want to tap into that because although the holidays seem to be a a good bit away, but for us um, being a school social worker, it's always at the forefront of our minds because after the summertime, it, it comes so quickly until we're always trying to be proactive when we are looking at these resources. And surely if it's on the forefront of our minds, 
it's on the forefront of, of our family's minds as well. So thank you for yes. moving ahead and sharing that information. Um, I want to mm-hmm. continue on with our questioning because as I shared, we do have more information that I want to share out. But right before I do that, it's time for another break. Listeners, don't go away. We will be right back with more information. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit astrologyconsultants.com or call or email her at 808 526 1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back once again. I am Dr. RC, your host, and you are listening to Dare to Soar live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We have returned, and I want to continue on with our questions. That call in number again is 1 866 451 1451. Now, Ms. Tenzinger, as we continue on, I would like to ask what type of survey or measurement tool, if you will, do you utilize to determine that there was or that there is a need for the services within the particular target area that you are currently serving? Yes, so I'm from Decatur, Georgia, and I'm so familiar. I'm pretty familiar with the areas that are in need throughout the cab, metro Atlanta, and some of the surrounding areas. But we also research the statistics online by um, looking at the census report and also the assistance programs throughout the different areas to help us determine where we're needed the most. Great, great, great. So also, just to go a step further, and I know you said that around the areas, because I know that some of my listeners uh, are probably thinking to themselves as they're thinking about resources, Mm-hmm. Will there be an expansion? Because you are you did share about the Decatur area. So yes, an expansion of other areas, perhaps. Um, if not right now, will there be an expansion in the future or in the near future? Yes, ma'am. There will definitely be an expansion. By God's grace, we are looking to um, expand, expand, even if it's not a brick and mortar, um, just our services in general. We are definitely, yes, ma'am, looking to expand. Okay, okay. How, do you have an idea as to which areas at, um, at this time or how far out you may mm-hmm. all? Mm-hmm. Right now we're looking, we're also looking into the Stockbridge area, um, which was kind of under the radar. I didn't know that the need was as great in Stockbridge as, as actually like the Cap County in Atlanta. Um, most of the people would think since the bus line doesn't come to Stop Bridge or go to Stop Bridge, that everyone there is pretty stable and well off. But what I have found is that that area um, is, is bad. The, the services are needed as well. Um, the school system, there are not a lot of um, homeless shelters 
was throughout Stockbridge and McDonough, but because that area is growing, um, which are a- other areas as well, we're looking to get grounded, um, get more our foot rooted in that area right now. So that's the area that we are looking into because, like I said, the need, it kind of went under the radar. I was not aware um, that is the homeless com- community here is, is big. It's very large, and the need is as great in the surrounding area as the surrounding area. Wonderful, wonderful. And thank you very much for sharing that information because it's always helpful to know you know, you have the sign that says coming soon. So that's always something to be aware of, to have the yes. alert sign on, to know that that's yes, yes. a resource that can be utilized for our families. Mm-hmm. Now, is there yes. a particular age group along with criteria that a student must meet to qualify? No, you said that you are, you're not going to turn anyone away, but that's just that's a question right. that I want to put out there for just for clarity purposes. Yes, ma'am. Nope. There's no particular age group at all. The only criteria is that you have to be in need. You have to have a need. That's the only criteria. So listeners, remember that when you hear about the prodigal son soup kitchen, there is no criteria. The only question is that you have to be in need. So we have clarified that. How do you receive the items uh, and or resources needed for distribution for your program? Yes, we receive um, items and resources solely by donations. Thankfully, we have people that donate items, food, clothing, furniture, and money. We also register with the Atlanta Food Bank, um, Gooder, Sam's Club, Kroger, CrowdRise, which is a GoFundMe for nonprofits, and also GodStar, which is a fundraising platform for nonprofits. And how often does that occur? Is it year-round? Is it a particular time of year? Yes, ma'am. So what I do with, as far as Kroger and Sam's Club, what we do is reach out to them when we have an event to sponsor that event. So they can send a gift card for food, or um, they can send a donation, monetary donation, or just sponsor the whole event. So it's pretty much um, where the need is. If there's an event going on and there's food, we reach out to our uh, sponsors at that time. As far as the Atlanta Food Bank, once we get a brick and mortar, we when we feed the people on a constant basis, since I'm registered with them, I would submit the need to them. And for a small amount monthly, they would donate food monthly, come in and provide the food where I can give to the community. Okay. And now, I um, want to... Go ahead. Go okay. ahead before I ask the question. Go ahead. Crowd, yep. CrowdRise um, is a GoFundMe that I have that, uh, that account set up where once we launch it, um, it is for the um, the GoFundMe for our organization to accept donations and GodStar as well. So those are the platforms that I will set up electronically or online where people can see more about the organization, what we're doing at the time, and donate. Okay. And I wanted to just go back to two things because you and I know the language that you're using. But anytime I'm asking or speaking with my guests, I like to have clarity for my listeners as well. And the two things are one thing sponsors. So give me a little bit more information and clarity information for uh, listeners. And then the other thing was brick and mortar. Um, as I share, we know what that is, but for clarity purpose yes. for listeners, so they can have full understanding as to what those, what that terminology means. Yes, ma'am. As far as the sponsors, by being a 501c3, um, we have to be registered with the IRS. And what the sponsors do is they provide the need. So we have to prove one, that we're registered and number two, that there is a need. Um, and they come in, the It could be the event could be free for us on our end, but we don't have to give anything. We have to prove that, hey, once we accept this from maybe example, let's say Kroger, we accept the donations from Kroger or a gift card of $500 to purchase the food from Kroger, a Kroger gift card. We have to prove to Kroger, hey, we are not reselling this at all. This is solely to give and provide to the community in need. So there is no, we get the, um, the donation solely to us, but we will not provide it or resell it, should I say, to the community. We have to prove that. And also a brick and mortar are a is a building 
um, our goal is to have eventually have a building and station building, but throughout Metro Atlanta or Georgia as well. Thank you. Thank you very much for providing that clarification. It's always good to have the knowledge and understanding of what's going on that way. If you have any questions about it or if you need to research it, you'll uh, absolutely know. We're going to hold right here, listeners. Don't go away. We'll be right back right after this commercial. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. Welcome back once again. We're here on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is Dare to Soar, and I am Dr. R.C., your host. Listeners, we have returned once again with my guest, Ms. Chalika Tenzinger, who is sharing about her nonprofit 501c3 organization. And might I add, she is the owner and founder of the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen that fights to end hunger and rebuild the community by providing food, clothing, and jobs to those in need. We are having such a wonderful conversation this morning as she is sharing a wealth of information, resource information, I might add, for our community and along with the expansion that is on the rise and soon to come. I want to continue on with our conversation, but just before that, I want to give that call in number again, which is 1 866 451 1451. Now, Ms. Tenzinger, please share with uh, the listeners this morning what types of communication methods are utilized to inform or get out the word about this wonderful program. Yes, ma'am. The communication methods we use um, are Facebook, Instagram, our website, the prodigal son soup kitchen dot org, um, word of mouth. And um, moving forward, we will also post on God Star and Crowd Rise, um, the GoFundMe pages of the events oh. coming up. OK, so that's going to be very, very exciting as to those um, media outlets. So have you faced any obstacles. And before you answer that, I have (laughs) something that I want to share with our listeners. As I was doing my own research about you, as I always do with everyone that I like to bring on, and I just want to share this with them before you answer that question. The biggest roadblock The biggest roadblock for me was being a single parent. Although it has not been easy, we have never Mm -hmm. been without food or shelter. God has always provided. I overcame by not allowing anger to overtake me and by remembering 
I have two children looking up to me and counting on me to pull through. I instilled in my children that failure is not an option and life's roadblocks are only to build endurance and make them stronger. While also remembering I had to live by example along with practicing what I preached and that allowed me to focus and keep going. Now for the question. Have you faced any obstacles within the program or while getting started? Oh, well, that caught me off guard. You're right. You, you do your research. That came from another interview and that almost oh, that brought me to tears. Oh, my God. Um, well, I didn't mean to bring yes, you to tears, um, but it's but always it's okay. good to share background information yes. because it you never know who you're going to be able to touch or help throughout the process. That's right. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, one of, as you mentioned, um, I am a single parent as well. Um, one of the biggest obstacles for me were, well, two of the biggest obstacles were fear and doubt. Um, I knew God called me to this position. But growing up, I heard and I listened to some of the negative things that people would say about me. And I didn't think that I was qualified or deserved what it take to stand in this type of position. And so I was my own worst enemy. But thankfully, I had a lot of people that prayed for me. They prayed with me. They encouraged me and they prayed me through to just take a step of faith. And thank God I took that one step because God moved from there. Love it. Absolutely love it. And just like I just shared, you never know throughout your process or throughout your journey who else it may empower, yes. encourage. And that's what I this is it all does. about. Uh, it, it is. Yes, it yes. is certainly going to do that. Um, I believe that when we pay it forward, when we are yes. able to share information, and that's what this is all about. Uh, and sharing and encouraging information with one another and everyone listening and tuned in. That's why it's so important to bring different entities or platforms on to this show, Dare to Soar. And what a name, Dare to Soar. You know, it's near yeah. and dear to me. That's what it's all about. And once again, thank you for not yeah, allowing you. one thing to stop your movement and moving yeah. forward because it is yeah. going to assist so many and the resources that you're providing is going to build and allow someone else to move forward and encourage them and let them know that where you stand right now does not mean that you have to stay there because there right. are yes. additional resources out here to allow you to move on to the next level. If you're willing and allow yourself to, That's you know, right. give yourself, afford yourself for the opportunity to receive what is here and being offered to you. And that's important that's right. to know and understand. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what advice would you give an individual who may be interested in starting a business or an organization, but does not have any idea of where he or she may need to begin? So the advice I would give to anyone looking to start a business or organization is just that, to get started. Get moving. Um, don't let fear or doubt get in the way. And understand it may not be easy. There may be some sleepless nights. There may be some tears along the way. But they're just that. They're growing, they're growing pain. Don't stop. And, you know, it's only to build and to strengthen you. Also, to research the successful, the business, the type of business, the successful part of it, and the unsuccessful parts of it. So you will know and understand the do's and the don'ts. And lastly, don't be afraid of failure. Step out on faith and, and just get moving. Wonderful, wonderful. And as listeners, as you can hear from Ms. Tenziger, she has her own personal journey that she as just by the little bit that I was able to read to you all, her own personal yes. journey that can sh be shared to take you there, to let you know yes. that there were some things in her journey or her path that could have simply stopped her from getting started with this. But she yes. chose to keep moving forward. And the ability to share this 
program the prodigal son soup kitchen with all of us. That's to fight to end hunger and rebuild the community by providing food, clothing and jobs to those in need. And what a wonderful program this is to be able to share. Listeners, don't go away. We have a little bit more to share before our time is up this morning. We will be right back. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit, whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective, and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Welcome back once again. I am Dr. R.C., your host, and you are listening to Dare to Soar, live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We have returned once again with my guest, owner and founder, Shalika Tenzinger of the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen. Before we wrap up this morning, we I do have a few more questions for Ms. Tenzinger. Ms. Tensinger, where would you like to see yourself within the company in the next five to 10 years? Where I would like to see our organization is with a brick and mortar, a building um, throughout the state of Georgia. So we can, um, which will allow us to service more people, serve more people, reach more people, um, provide more resources and jobs and connect with other organizations um, as well. I enjoy partnering with more nonprofit organizations where we can extend our reach and also companies that can be the power driving force um, to catapult us with the money, the funds, and also the volunteers to help us to reach more people. Outstanding, outstanding. I'm loving it, loving it. Now, I know with the Prodigal Son, we talked about um, how you want to expand things of that nature. So do you have any initiatives or upcoming events on the horizon? Yes, ma'am. We are, right now, we are getting together, um, our, my board members and myself, a fundraising event, which is where right now we're planning, once everything is final um, and set in stone, we will definitely inform everyone and launch it. Um, of our fundraising event, but we do have a fundraising event coming up soon. Okay, so you sound like you're being a little secretive about that. So yeah. I guess you guys are not quite ready to tap into We're it or let the listeners ready. know. Okay, I just thought that's, I'd just try to right. get a little peek into that. I just thought I'd ask, just thought I'd ask to try yeah, to get a little peek wait. into I that. Wanna, that's right. I want to wait till the partnerships and everything is, you know, final. Before I launch it, I want to make sure, hey, this is what it is. Everyone agrees to um, what it is. But, yeah, once it's final, we're waiting on a couple of more things. Um, we will definitely launch it soon. Yes. 
I understand. I understand. So, okay, since I can't get that information out of you just yet, <laughs> uh, if li- if my listeners wanted to reach out to you to come out just to get you to come and speak about the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen, just to give them more information. Are you open to coming out and speaking about the organization? Oh, yes. Yes, ma'am. I am open. Um, Again, my, some of my board members will also come out as well. We're open, yeah, to coming out, to speak about it, to encourage, even to give advice on how to get started. We are strong believers in um, partnering and helping um, to get what we need. And also, we're open to help as well because we're growing. So if we can connect with someone that can help better um, us, our organizations, we're, yes, we're willing to do so. Okay, okay. So would you all just, is it just in the Decatur, DeKalb County area? And I'm asking this question because I do have a lot of listeners and they're listening from all over. And I know it's in the Atlanta area and you service that area. So is it open to other areas within Atlanta yes, that ma'am. you would we be willing to service on? wherever is needed? Yes, ma'am. So wherever we can, we service wherever the need is, that's what we're servicing. So we're open to it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I just want to put that out there because um, yes, I know that's you. a question that would certainly, certainly come up. Uh, for them, certainly. So as I said, listeners, we are speaking with owner, founder, Shalika Tenzinger, who is sharing information about the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen this morning, who's provided a wealth of information about this wonderful resource. Now, as we can hear, this is definitely a resource that will rebuild the community, by providing the food, clothing, and jobs to those who are in need. Now, before we get off the air this morning, uh, some of the things that I always like to share about empowerment and encouraging and strengthening. If you would be able to give some information on those three words, what would they, what would those words be? Or if you have to give mm. a couple of sentences on those things. And you can tie okay, them into yes, your own journey. Yeah, strength and empowering. Um, if I can give um, words, it would be words of encouragement of that um, it's not going to come easy. And I will call them, wait, I have a 17-year-old son that is grew, that is due to graduate high school. And that's something that I have, I'm dealing with right now. He's headed to college. But I tell him all the time we're going through um, high school with his work. The weight, the pressure that you feel is not to break you. It's to strengthen you. Is to build muscles, just like weight training. When you weight train, you're lifting weights, they're heavy. You even feel your body is sore afterwards. You feel the effect afterwards. But the look and the feeling that you have of being healthier and looking healthier, it, it supersedes the pain that you went through. So there's definitely a process to get where you're going. Don't stunt the growth of the process. I call them growing pains. It's only to build you, to make you stronger, to be able to handle what God has for you. I like that. I definitely, definitely like that about strengthening and rebuilding. Those are some wonderful, wonderful things to share with any young person. Because as we know, they go through transitions. And especially when we're talking about a topic such as this, and I'd like the way you tie all of those things in together, because as we talk about resources and what you're doing with the prodigal son soup kitchen, we know our children go through a lot of processes with this as well, because these are things that are certainly beyond their control and they're not willing to openly admit to anything, which is rightfully so, because it's a lack of understanding. They don't ask to be in particular situations, but they have to go through the situations. So certainly, once again, the resource is wonderful. We appreciate it. And thank you so much for the resource Mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Mm -hmm. So let's get to websites. Share about your websites, Twitter, all of that wonderful, wonderful stuff to reach out to you on. Yes, ma'am. We have the website, um, theprodigalsonsoupkitchen.org, and it's uh, P-R-O-D-I-G-A-L, 
fund, soupkitchen.org. Um, it's a website that shows our events that we have done in the past. Um, I also post upcoming events and a way for um, anyone to connect with us. You can leave your contact information where we will give you a call back. We will follow up with you. If there is a need, if there is more information um, you would like to know or um, anything to connect with us. We also have the Instagram page, um, the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen, and you can also like our Facebook page, the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen on Facebook. Thank you so much. Listeners, don't go away. We'll be right back with a little bit more before we wrap up for this morning. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability. So they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Once again, we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am your host, Dr. R.C., and you are listening to Dare to Soar. Listeners, we have returned, and we are about to wrap up this morning with owner-founder Shalika Tenzinger, who has been sharing how she became empowered to start the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen that fights to end hunger and rebuild the community by providing food, clothing, and jobs to those in need. Now, before we leave this morning, I just have two small questions to ask before we leave. Ms. Tensinger, share with our listeners, the first one is, how are items distributed to our families that are coming to pick up the clothing and the food and then informed about the jobs as well? Yes, ma'am. So how the items are distributed, we go um, within the community. Uh, we understand a lot of times where if we're stationed at one point, they cannot get to us. So what we do is we find out where the need is and what is needed, and we go to that community. So the items are distributed distributed wherever um, the need is and whoever we're working with at the time, we go to them. And also as far as jobs, I am a recruiter by trade right now. And so I have a lot of connections within um, the job area. And what we, if anyone comes to me that needs jobs or I like to get referrals and also with the company that I'm working with, we have um, jobs available for people that have background, um, background issues. And we also have jobs available for the people um, that does not. So through my connections and how I'm connected, um, throughout the community and also as far as professionally. Um, that's how we're able to help. Outstanding, outstanding. And then my last question is, how are families informed about the pickup locations? So what we will do with um, my organization, <clears throat> we reach out. First, we find out where the need is, and we reach out to um, 
that organization. And we, because we go out to them, everything is distributed. So what we try to do is before we get there is find out um, the family. Who is in a family, what is needed, how many kids, their sizes, the shoe sizes, the clothes. So when we go to that, when we go to that organization or go there, um, everything is packaged where we're ready to just hand it out to them. So it, it's more organized that way. Wonderful, but wonderful. If someone is in need, if someone is in need and is not within an organization, if they reach out to us and, and let us know, we would definitely um, help them. There has been times where, you know, we help people. We take some furniture to someone, or if they need food, we drop off the food. So we also do that as well. So right now they don't have to worry about coming to us. We come to them. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, One-stop shop. A one-stop shop. That's I right. love it. I love it. Yes, ma'am. Thank and, you. Thank you. And is there um, hours of notification or turnaround time as far as the organization letting the families know in that matter? If you say or give them information, you have 24 hours that I'm informing you that we will be at this location at this particular time and date. That's right. So if it's more on a personal level, if someone, it, it depends on the need, how big the need is. But if someone reach out to us within our organization, we do definitely um, try to connect with them within 24 hours to see, um, to find out what the need is. Once we know what the need is, it helps us. It says we can have it possibly if we have food um, stored, we can have it that day. Or if we have to get um, more food or um, to help them connect with resources as far as finding a shelter or different organization. It depends on the need of how um, long it may take, but the turnaround time to connect with them is definitely within 24 hours of that same day. Outstanding, outstanding. We have been provided with so many resources this morning um, from the Prodigal Son Soup Kitchen, owner, founder, Miss Shalika Tenzinger, I hope that everyone listening has been taking very, very good notes. She's provided us with website information, with upcoming event information, even though I tried to get a little bit more out of her, <laughs> uh, but she's holding on tight to that. Uh, I'm going to have to try to get a tidbit for that. Uh, but we're we're going to hold tight with her. Listeners, I have enjoyed my time with you all this morning. I will be returning next week. Have a fantastic, fantastic rest of the week. Remember, you have been listening to the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am Dr. RC, your host. I will be talking with you all next week. Enjoy. This has been Dare to Soar with your host, Dr. R.C. Come take a ride and soar to your highest level possible each week on Dr. R.C.'s Dare to Soar. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company. 